So, uh, yeah, then we move on actually to our uh, partner uh, for today, to Sixth. And um, we welcome Konrad Tomat. Toma, he's the senior vice president for mobility products at Sixth. And we have on board Stuart Donnelly. Uh, he is the global sales director at Sixth. Welcome, uh, both of you. Uh, thank you for helping uh, and uh, supporting uh, this event. And we uh, will talk about, um, or you will actually talk about how connectivity enables a sublime uh, digital user experience. So Stuart and Conrad, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Saskia. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, in, in Valentine's week, where we should all be sharing our love. Uh, I wanted to share uh, my love for, uh, for another topic than my beloved uh, subject of mobility. And as, um, as, as Saskia said at the beginning, the objective of this stream helped to, to drive adoption in, uh, in people transitioning from car ownership to mobility. I'm delighted to have our senior vice president, as Saskia mentioned, for mobility products, Conrad with me, and uh, we will hear from Conrad in a minute. Uh, before we do so, I wanna set the scene a little bit and uh, effectively address the, the topic in hand that, that was, um, was summarized at the beginning uh, in terms of how, can it, how we've embraced connectivity to deliver a sublime user experience. So I'm gonna fly through this very quickly because uh, I want to spend uh, as much of the time as possible talking uh, to, to Conrad as possible. Um, but look, this is the, uh, the key and, and the vision behind Six Strategy. Uh, would you believe more than three years ago now, um, the roadmap says um, for, for effectively uh, becoming a leading mobility service provider um, consisted of, of three main technological milestones. The first one was to collate all of the products that we had into one digital interface, uh, into an app. So that's basically the car rental proposition, car sharing and ride hailing all into one. Uh, the second step was effectively then to merge our car rental and sharing business uh, together um, by connecting those vehicles into the cloud. Um, and effectively by connecting those vehicles into cloud, in us to provide and enhance the user experience to you because then basically through the digital experience you have in your, um, in your telephone you basically then are able to connect uh, to, to our vehicles and there is a effectively convergence of uh, what, what is a car rental and what is a, a car share in, in the most simplest form. I'll show you what that means in a minute but I think the, the, uh, the, the third and most significant aspect of being connected to the cloud connectivity has enabled us to be much more um, creative in terms of pricing and use AI as a basis for pricing, for yield management, in order to uh, ensure that our vehicles are placed in, in locations uh, where you need them. So really, uh, you know, technological demand management and planning for the future in terms of what comes next, which we're all forward to, is autonomous driving. So into uh, into the next slide, you can see um, effectively these are the four core pillars of what we provide in our digital interface, which is then connected through the cloud. So that's rent, that's share, that's ride and six plus, which is a car subscription proposition. And as you can see there, we've had three million downloads of that application. And I'll talk a little bit more about the benefits in a minute. But let's just see what that looks like. How does that work? Because um, I got a video here and I'll talk over it as it runs through. This is coming from my uh, my mobile phone. Interesting to see Olga had uh, a similar one, so I'm pleased we uh, we, we we do that. Um, I'm just going to put in Amsterdam here, and what I want to show you is how we've effectively used again connectivity. Here, this is six rent, and you can see what says fast lane in Amsterdam. There's a whole bunch of them. These are virtual branches um, that that basically have no buildings, have no people staffing them effectively you uh, you are then able to search the location you want you're able then to see the range of vehicles that, uh, that are available in in those locations as you can see uh, comrade and i will talk about that in a minute there's a you know broad range of different vehicle types to meet different uh, use cases 
Um, and uh, as you can see there, timeline wise, it's available, how to access the vehicle. And effectively, it's all done through your mobile phone. So you don't need uh, to, to go to a, a branch uh, where there are people uh, sitting, serving you. You go directly to the car that you reserved and open the vehicle with your uh, phone. Um, share is much broader than that in terms of connectivity. I mean, that's just Amsterdam showing you a much broader picture of cars, but also e-scooters um, and uh, and mopeds um, and uh, effectively thousands of cars, scooters all around the streets of the cities where we are operating. Um, here is Amsterdam is the case that I'm, uh, I'm sharing. That's a roughly a thousand vehicles, all electric, by the way, no uh, combustion engine cars uh, across the Netherlands. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see the price there is 31 euro cents a minute. We'll again, talk about the pricing model and how we uh, how we use pricing as a means to, to drive uh, demand and, and vehicle locations. Um, and yeah, and then going across from uh, you know from 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 the Netherlands um, into uh, in, into Germany and such uh, the share proposition. So effectively, you've got rent where you're able to rent a car and go directly to the car, but you also have share where, where you uh, you can do. That. Uh, if we um, yeah, go on to the next slide, if that's OK, uh, I think you've seen enough of the video. Um, yeah, the, the word at the beginning was how do we use connectivity to drive um, a sublime user experience? And, you know, what we've seen here in terms of the app rating in the app store from those three million people that have downloaded it, we have the highest score uh, app rating of, uh, of, of all of our, uh, you know, peers in our place. Uh, across ride hailing and, uh, and and car rental, um, and and just really as a summary uh, on a final note on the next slide, please is what does what does the connectivity combined with digitalization enable? Um, so you know we we highlight here some of the the key aspects in terms of being able to have uh, both a corporate profile and a personal profile, which then drives how you may book and pay for the service. Because as we were hearing earlier. You, you know, some companies will, will offer, uh, you know, the, the the usage free, if you like, to their employees. Other companies will limit the the, uh, the capability. Um, I think the key we want to bring across here as a mobility provider is that whether you use a, a platform, whether you use different payment mechanisms, effectively, the range of services that, that Sixt has created digitally and connected to the cloud enables uh, you, you to, to use them via the app. Uh, and effectively it's paperwork um, and enables you to, uh, to to access the vehicle. So there, I think, um, in lies a few of the uh, the, the key uh, points. Um, that is just sharing with you where, in fact, as you saw earlier, where, where uh, the share and fast lane capability is available. Um, but I think um, beyond that, it, the, the use cases, um, which I, um, which I think are quite broad when, when you think about those range of products are, uh, you know, leisure, you know, whether it be at the weekend with your family uh, for, for, for business, um, whether it be for commuting as a traveler. And that's the, the key here, right, is, um, is, is enabling a range of solutions so that your traveler, your employee, your family member, uh, doesn't need to rely on, uh, on on car ownership. So that's a, a very quick, hopefully, um, intro into uh, in, into how we use connectivity combined with digitalization to improve um, the, the user experience. Um, Conrad, delighted to to have you in this session. Um, your title um, suggests that um, mobility, uh, maybe not in your name, but certainly in your uh, in your DNA, is part of, uh, of what you do. But tell us a little bit about what what, what is it you do in Six Comrades? Sure. Thanks, Stuart, for for having me. Um, thanks a lot for for being here. Um, it's really great. I I'm with Six for um, for seven years now. Um, for for quite a long time, build up one of the products that that kind of make up our mobility platform. One, which is um, Six Ride. No? Um, I think as Stuart spoke about, we believe that replacing car ownership doesn't doesn't work with one product. I think you need the mix, and I think others have said this, something similar. So worked on Six Ride for a long time, and basically um, since the year, I'm responsible for the for the digitalization of our car rental 
um, product or operations there, uh, including the fleet. Um, so exactly um, this topic of connectivity and, and, and these kind of uh, topics are, uh, are in my in my area. And um, obviously, super exciting times because um, we just see the change really happening of um, of uh, reaping the benefits of a connected fleet and uh, a digitized experience. Mm. Yeah, I think. Um... The, the the connection between the um, the, the different products you, you highlighted too there um, I, I named in the uh, in the slides farming um, and the and the virtual branch and um, and share how how do you think from a you know six perspective that helps people to transition from from car ownership in terms of those type of products yeah. and obviously ride being one that you have a great deal of affection to. So, so I think we, we believe that, I mean, for us, it's super exciting. We come from the from car rental uh, background history and essentially, and essentially that's, that's very much a travel product, uh, so to say, in, in its history. And um, of course, we right. now um, shift to being mobility company and also car rental becomes a mobility product much more than only a travel product, so to say. Um, but I think it's a crucial question, right? What what makes people really switch from ownership to to shared mobility to a service based a mobility as a service? And I think um, uh, that is a critical question that we all kind of work on. And um, in the end, it can only happen through through this uh, connectivity and digitization. Um, I think nobody, you know, if you if you think about it, the 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 experience of um, of owning a car versus um, the kind of the classical car rental experience of where you have to make a reservation, you go to the counter, you, you know, maybe we try to sell you something, lots of things, and then you try to sign a piece of paper. So the old school process is is completely blocking us, I think, from from uh, from that transition, right? It's not possible to conceive that somebody for a day-to-day -day use of a vehicle or car mobility would go through such a process. So it's um, it's preeminent for us to to change that and we're working on that um, uh, on, on digitizing of and we have already digitized our full car rental process and make it very easy yeah only if it's very easy um, it's uh, conceivable that somebody would exchange their own car for for um, for uh, for a car rental product or a share product right so it has to be super easy i think that's crucial um, um, for point number one and uh, as we all know of course digitization is there uh, has helped us make so many things so much easier than in the past and also here, I think it's one of the crucial aspects. Huh? I think one one thing that's super important for us, we believe that um, uh, we as we we always uh, our claim to fame is that we are premium. Of course, it's very important for us. It's very much part of our DNA. What that very much means is that we we don't only offer you know affordable cars, which we also do, of course, but we also we offer the range. And I think um, that we also very much believe is a crucial aspect, right? I mean, how can you? If you if you drive you know if you have your own car and you have a somewhat decent car, it's very hard to con convince you not to say okay you, you give that up and you now only you can only use a, a very very small car sharing car that you see with many car sharing players out there. Maybe it's even dirty and whatnot, right? I mean like then again the experience will be so much uh, worse than than owning a car. It will not be possible um, to to convince people to switch. Um, so I think we also choice right. uh, choice of uh, brands, choice of products. Also having premium choices for certain use cases, we believe is super crucial as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agreed. And I think the other aspect that is increasingly, Conrad, um, increasingly, it's everywhere. People are talking about obviously the sustainability. Um, how, how do you see that six helps people to tackle that um, that agenda from you know from a shared mobility perspective? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, we we all we all know uh, that our current model of kind of owning one or two cars is not sustainable. I mean, we do that in the developed world. Uh, it's completely impossible if if everybody would want to do that. Uh, we have to change our way of um, uh, of, of uh, using mobility there and. Um, and uh, of course, I mean, um, that is uh, like making mobility accessible very easy and thereby, you know, um, uh, convincing more people to, to use cars in, as a service and share them, effectively share them with other people will, of course, um, help there a long way. Uh, I think it's, uh, I think people in the end, they are driven by price a lot. Uh, I think if you make it much more expensive to be sustainable and environmentally friendly, it's, uh, it's very hard, it's going to be very hard to convince people 
Um, I think uh, so price is very important. Uh, you know, the, the ease of use, the customer experience is very important. If it's much worse, as I said earlier, than owning a car, again, people will probably not make the switch. So, so our, our, uh, our endeavor is really to make it so easy and so simple and so affordable to use um, shared mobility, to use car sharing and car rental. Um, that the switch is really possible, right. and if we do, then yeah. on its own, we've of course, you know, reduced the number of cars on the streets. Uh, we've, we've we've made the made the cities more sustainable, and that's that's our that's our journey. Yeah, yeah fa fantastic answer, and I think that it brings me also to another um, topic. The um, you know, I mentioned earlier about the virtual branch, so cars um, be, being located w without the the building and the, and the people effectively. Um, share um, ha just thinking about, and I guess in a some certain aspect you answered the, the question earlier. But for, I think the, the key obviously has to be how do you how does sixth help people to make that process easier? You know, it, from today I own a car. Tomorrow I've decided whether it be for sustainable reasons, financial reasons. Um, how does sixth make that change easier? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's um, it's easier and more difficult in different areas of uh, of um, or di for different people in different different locations, right? I mean, of course, it's much easier for us to to make that switch in the cities, in the city centers, where, where right. we offer our share product. So I think we need to look at it, right? I think uh, we cannot overpromise um, on this journey, but I think in the city centers it's absolutely possible, right? I mean, the in the suburban areas or the rural areas, very hard, right? Car ownership will there be uh, probably the, the mode of choice for a longer time. But in the city centers, it's possible for us, right? And um, and I think there, um, it's all about the, the, yeah. the different use cases and, and how we how we offer the right choice for the for the different use cases. And and share is, um, of course, great if you right. just need to go get from A to B and you maybe drive on your own. And um, but then it's it's, of course, not super easy to offer our full range of cars on the street, right? It's just naturally will, from a utilization perspective, be difficult. So, so the combination of of virtual branches, which effectively have the same customer experience in terms of you know making the booking and and opening the car with the app and uh, and doing everything digitally, combined with share, which you know covers some use cases right on your doorstep, um, is I think a great combination. Yeah? But we actually. Also right. believe um, um, a much improved um, delivery collection product will be super interesting. Uh, will be super interesting because um, that again, there you can maybe make it even more attractive for more specific use cases. A family going for the weekend, needing to to um, car seats. It's not possible to do that with with a share product, uh, not really. And um, at the same time, maybe it's also too much of a hassle for a family with two small kids to to go to the branch, right? right. So I think a delivery collection product. Can also be very interesting, but again, right? The price point is also crucial, so we're working on on making that also affordable, and, and the combination of the products will then be the answer. Yeah. Okay, okay. The, on that same point, how, how do you um, how, how do you uh, the Conrad show? But how how does um, how does sixth um, drive? Uh, how does how does sixth use connected to drive demand? You know, thinking about. You know, making sure that the, the car is in the right place at the right time of the day, that it's got the right fuel in or, or uh, is fully charged, um, the right type of cars in the right places, small cars, big cars. T tell me about that. How do you do that? So um, I think um, it's not it's not possible to run a run a system like that without having the vehicles all connected and and knowing exactly what's going on, right? Um, uh, we come from a world where where we where we have a branch network where we have you know uh, operations uh, process efficiency being being key, and now we we move to a world which is fully digital and and connected, um, and only with that we can actually. Um, make a product available digitally without, you know, human interactions, and that goes along with many, many different topics. Um, uh, as you mentioned, um, uh, the demand side, of course, right? I mean, if we uh, we know the patterns of mobility in the city over the week, um, uh, we know where the cars are, we can shift them around. Um, I think that's a, a very crucial. Um, demand for car sharing, especially, is 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 completely driven. By availability, of course, it's driven by the time of day uh, and many other things. But it's also very much driven, or like the conversion into the product is very much driven um, by the availability. So it's crucial to know where the cars need to be. Um, so that for that, we of course use the connectivity in the data, 
um, and uh, but uh, but also of course we we use it for pricing purposes and many other topics. Yeah? But the whole connected world is also, you know, the the whole operations process is is um, is now fueled by these by the data that comes from the vehicles and um, the operation process, but also the, the the customer journey, right? I mean, you remember all, uh, I mean, discussions you maybe have had with a current with a current company around the fuel levels of your vehicle when you returned it, right? I mean, this is. It's not something that we want to have in 2022. And so when you when we connect to the vehicles and know the exact fuel levels, we can close that topic and, and have no discussions right. and, and just much more trustworthy product, right? Yeah. Yeah, indeed. No, um, from, a, from a cost perspective, you alluded to it earlier. How does um, how, how does the connected proposition that you describe, how, how does it compare with, with the alternatives? You know, if you think across the range of rent, share, ride, uh, public transport. Say, say again, I didn't get the beginning of the question. Sorry. How how do you how do you see that the the cost differentials between the different products in terms of rides, you know, transport? How how do you see the 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 different cost components? How do they compare? For the customer, you mean? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, of course, the uh, I mean, when individual mobility will always be more expensive than than um, you know public transport and stuff. But I think we um, uh, uh, the the share product is super affordable, right? I mean, the share product is um, uh, is not is, is a couple of cents per per, per minute. Uh, or, um, I think it's super affordable, uh, comparable with with a taxi ride or cheaper. Um, um, but I think you know, I think that's. The, uh, balances out. Yeah? I think uh, we have these different options. We have the the shared uh, micro mobility in our platform. Then we have the car sharing. Then we have the taxi, which is a bit more expensive, but obviously you have the luxury of being driven. Um, car sharing you can do over the weekend gives you a price point. It's interesting, but then you know obviously when you go longer, the car rental comes in and the subscription, right? So I think it's it's about um, right. really having the range of different use cases and and mobility needs, and um, and trying to to bring the best customer experience and, uh, and for us also important the premium experience but still make it uh, make it an affordable um, proposition right because uh, that is what will drive conversion into these into these products fantastic great and there is yeah. Saskia. yes hello and and actually i have some questions for you and i also have some uh, good news so we had the uh, we have the answers of the first poll. Huh? We ask if you only would have access to one form of mobility, what would it be? And the winner is uh, with almost fifty percent is the car or the e-car. Mm. And um, the second one is a public transport with sixteen point seven percent. And uh, also sixteen point seven percent is the bicycle. So those are the most uh, uh, popular forms of mobility. If it's if you have would have only one choice, and there are also right. seven percent of the participant participants amongst us who prefer the passenger passenger drone. So, uh, <laughs> but that was a bit of futuristic question. No, no, thank you so much, Stuart and Conrad. I I do have some questions, and I also and uh, I saw in the audience. Ronald de Haan actually had a similar question as I had myself. So I saw Paris, I saw Amsterdam, but all these nice black dots, e-scooters and cars. These are all cars that are available. Am mm -hmm. I right? Yeah. How, in, how on earth are you managed the parking for all these cars? And, <laughs> and, and how do you manage that you take them from where they are left behind and take them to where the demand is mm -hmm. in 10 minutes, an hour, the next day? Sure, uh, let me take that. So I think it's... Um... With car sharing, it's um, they they uh, generally you have an agreement with the cities to to do parking. I mean, uh, there's uh, quite some studies that show that car sharing cars will will reduce the number of cars needed in a city, and that they do. Um, and so cities are uh, most often happy to to allow parking on public streets, which uh, which needs to be paid for, of course. But but they they do allow parking on public streets. Um, and then, of course, we rely for our car rental fleet. We we have um, we rely on our branch network, um, which more and more will be mainly parking lots, right? I mean, um, this is exactly the point. 
uh, when we when we go more and more fully digital, essentially what we need is a is a is a parking lot. Um, but we've always had, you know, we've always had, of course, a branch network that that could hold our fleets. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and we do that. Yeah. Yeah, but the parking is also, uh, the cities want to become more green, they want to use that parking space that is coming free from kicking out uh, the vehicle out of the, out, out of the streets. Also, a lot of parking spaces are, are private. So mm -hmm. if you take away the private car and put people into shared uh, vehicles, for example, so that I, I, I still do see that to be quite problematic, problematic for a city organization what is your opinion absolutely true uh, i think these are these are very crucial discussions on city levels and uh, cities decide differently yeah? i mean i think in uh, in munich where i'm right now we've just uh, um, uh, they just announced that there are more and more um, uh, dedicated car sharing parking spaces yeah? so exactly for that purpose because uh, they see the value of car sharing in reducing the number of private vehicles um, other cities have not made that move yet, possibly, yeah? and there are, there are discussions, and uh, as I said, we, we have, the, especially the car sharing product, uh, we, um, uh, we, uh, we cover with a lot of research, also from the local university in Munich, for example, uh, to show how the effects on, on vehicle numbers in, in cities and to show the positive effect on the, on the, on the number of vehicles needed. Um, and with those, we're able to, to, to convince, for example, Munich to, to have dedicated car sharing parking uh, in the city. Yeah? It's still, I mean, that doesn't cover the whole um, need and the cars are allowed to park on the normal public parking in the roads, but um, that's the right way to go. Yeah? So I think in, in general, of course, cities want to reduce parking of cars. They want to free up the space um, for, for other uh, topics. And actually with Corona, at least in Munich, lots of you know par restaurants and pubs were allowed to have uh, use parking for, for outside uh, eating. Um, but uh, it's it's happening that that more and more car sharing parking is actually also dedicated. Yeah, yeah. and I think one of the other mobility problems that uh, we have in cities is congestion. And I heard you talk about uh, artificial intelligence uh, that you use uh, um, to manage uh, pricing and things like that. Would you also uh, use your knowledge and your data? and uh, the capability of adjusting pricing and, and link it to demand to, uh, for example, avoid and to overcome congestion. Would you be willing or do you look into that? Um, we have not so far. Uh, I think um, uh, generally uh, I, would, um, uh, I would definitely not say no to that. Why not? I think it's super, I think it becomes more and more important. This is this can only be done in, in cooperation with the cities. Anything, any change that has to happen has to be done together with the cities. And so um, absolutely we'd be willing to do that. We already do things like um, suggesting that uh, we ask for the, for the destination of customers, where do you want to go? And then, you know, suggest that, you know, it might be very crowded, maybe not a good idea to go there right now, things like that. So we try to already hint to customers um, uh, things like that, but uh, which goes in the direction. But um, yeah, I mean, generally, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Stuart? I think just to add to that, Saskia, I mean, obviously, I mentioned earlier that the, the, the sharing vehicles, for example, you know, majority of them are, electric, you know, already uh, um, EVs. Um, so, you know, that that's uh, tackling the sustainability agenda. The fact that they are shared mobility means that they're taking cars off the road. Um, and I think coming back to the results of your survey, it's a very interesting and valid one um, because, um, you know, whether we like it or not, people still love cars. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's not going to change uh, overnight that people have nice cars, as, as Comrade alluded to, today. And tomorrow they're going to have to substitute that for something which is less attractive, whether that be a scheduled service like a train service uh, or, or a small, dirty you know, uh, alternative, uh, a car, uh, you know, pe it, people still have an, an attraction to a nice car, the car that they want. Yeah. Um, so, um, we're, we're igniting that, but I think on your survey, by the way, I did vote for this crazy one because actually I couldn't pick just one. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to have a car. Uh, I, I'm sure that was in the thinking of your, uh, your, your assessment, uh, ultimately, and that's, I guess, again, the, uh, the, the, the play behind what we've created, right? It, it's about 
providing a range of different mobility solutions for people to meet their individual needs when, when they need it. Yeah, I have one last question in the last minute. Um, let me let me see. I think this one from Zoltan Chinkovsky, uh, if I hope I pronounce it correctly. What is the split of users slash vehicles between the different use cases that you provide? What is the most popular? Um, so, um, so we don't offer car sharing in, in every city, of course, where we have car rental, but in the cities where we do, um, the, 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 the usage numbers are much higher in the car sharing world. I mean, like it's, uh, they're, they're, uh, it's a completely different kind of like from the usage volume, it's a completely different game. Um, there's very high numbers in the car sharing. Of course, those are very short trips, right? I mean, car rental, you get a car for the whole day. Um, uh, and we are also working on changing that and, and merging this all together. But um, but the usage numbers are much higher in, on the on the car sharing product than on the car rental product. Um, but to the point, um, the fleets are not not uh, in the same way, you know, much bigger on the car sharing because those cars are used by multiple people during the same day, right? So this is to the point of sharing, right? I mean, um, uh, I think that you see it quite nicely. Of course, you. Uh, the fleets are probably relatively similar in size um, uh, with in the cities where we have car sharing between car rental and car sharing. But um, for car sharing, many, many more people would use the same car. All right. So with that, yeah, the time is up. Thank you so much, Stuart. Thank you so much, Conrad. Really a pleasure much. to have you here on board. Look forward uh, to see you in the panel and uh, to share some other uh, in the news from the poll with you. Uh, for now, we will have our networking break. In the networking break, if you if you see your screen, you can go on the left side. There is the networking uh, break. So after you've uh, took a drink, go there. You will be randomly uh, connected. It's all about connectivity today. You will be randomly connected to one of the other participants. And it's really fun. And if you, if you don't like each other, you can also click away. That's also fine. But uh, try it. And I would really like to see it forward to see you again at 3.30. See you later.